Hey, welcome back to the Crowdfunding Demystified Podcast. My name is Salvador Brigman, and on this show, we talk about everything crowdfunding, how to raise money, how to smash your goal on Kickstarter or Indiegogo, how to get traffic and funding and backers to a new Kickstarter campaign or other type of crowdfunding campaign. We cover a lot on this show, and one of my favorite parts of having this show is being able to bring on people who right now are in the trenches, they're kicking ass, they're taking names, they're getting funding to their projects, they're accumulating backers, and they're just kind of coming on the show to share with you exactly what it is that they're doing in order to have this effect happen. So that's actually the premise for today's show, which is I brought on a coaching student who runs the Kickstarter campaign IRRK. This is Jung, and this is for an immersive arcade game for reinventing your home. It's a really neat project. I urge you to also check it out on Kickstarter because it's a very good video. It's a really um, cool design and a lot of really interesting retro games that you can play on IR Arcade. Now, this episode is not only, I think, a, a good plan or a good foundation for a good campaign because you'll start to learn a little bit about what you got to do in the pre-launch phase leading up to a project where this campaign specifically got instant funding in the first couple of days with their project right now at the time i'm recording this episode that over four hundred and seventy five thousand dollars that they've raised on kickstarter more than one thousand backers and still 15 days to go so it's a really exciting project and a really exciting time um, so you're gonna learn a lot on today's episode, but also I think you should pay attention to the way in which today's founder was able to assemble a team around him in order to pull off something, pull off a launch that's a lot bigger um, than he could just do on his own. Team building is such a huge part of doing crowdfunding and also launching a new business that it's something that I think deserves a little bit more attention than quite honestly that I've been putting on it in the last couple of years. Um, for me, you know, I started this podcast with a huge focus on marketing because this is what people were not doing. You know, so now more and more people are becoming more aware of the marketing that you have to do to go into a Kickstarter campaign or an Indiegogo campaign to raise six figures and beyond. And one of the, the hallmarks to any project that's doing something like 400K plus is having a very strong team around the founder who can actually execute on this vision, right? So you can hear a lot about that on today's podcast episode, and I think you're gonna like it. In addition, if you have not yet, I have a YouTube channel out there under my name, Salvador Brigman. I also got a blog called crowdcrux.com that I started in 2012, and we publish regularly on there with crowdfunding tips and advice. I have an online forum called kickstarterforum.org. That's kickstarterforum.org. It's a free online forum where you can go there and you can learn a little bit about crowdfunding. You can also interact with some other creators that are on that online forum, or if you want to, you can promote your project there in that community for free. Um, finally, I have a newsletter that I do called Crowdfunding Tips or Killer Crowdfunding Tips. And if you want to, you can go to crowdcrux.com slash newsletter and you'll get my weekly crowdfunding newsletter where I share some great tips and advice when it comes to crowdfunding. So there's a lot of great stuff for you there. Um, I've also written a book, The Kickstarter Launch Formula, available on iTunes, um, available you know in different stores. But I'll tell you about that towards the end of today's podcast episode. Let's jump right into it. No more um, you know leading up to this. Let's just get right into it. Again, this is Jong with IRRK, one of my coaching students. It's coming up right after this. This podcast episode is sponsored by the Gadget Flow. The Gadget Flow reaches over 28 million people and they've been around since 2012. They are Indiegogo and Kickstarter experts. They featured over 5,000 crowdfunding campaigns. And if you have a technology or design campaign, it is a great platform to generate awareness and get backers. You can check them out at thegadgetflow.com slash submit and list your project today. Jong, welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me. Very excited. Do you think we can get started? Maybe you could just describe for the listeners, what is IR Arcade? How do they use it? Um, who is it for? Sure, absolutely. So this is, I, I sort of call it a um, home arcade 2.0, right? Next generation arcade. Um, it was built uh, to bring the arcade experience to your home, basically with premium experiences that you have not experienced before. Uh, so first thing that it does is it brings your nostalgic retro games uh, that, that you used to love in your, back in the days. Mm -hmm. And it also plays uh, some new experiences like, for example, uh, modern games, right? The FPSs or games with amazing modern graphics like, like our current generation console graphics. Um, those games, for the first time, uh, you can also play on an arcade experience as well. 
Uh, and uh, these games you can play with premium experiences uh, because it's, we got a really big, huge 19-inch display that's uh, high, high definition, 100 watts of very powerful stereo audio and premium joystick um, and controllers. Then you're standing right in front of a, a arcade device and you're playing these games. All of a sudden you get very um, cinematic and immersive experience that you have not experienced before. These are the type of experiences that we're trying to introduce utilizing our device. Mm -hmm. And our mm -hmm. device is designed to fit anywhere in, in your home. Uh, it's, it's designed very beautifully, uh, slim, but very comfortable to play. It'll just fit in anywhere. All you have to do is plug it in and it's ready to go. And it's connected to Wi-Fi. So yeah. Also download new games as well. It's that expandable. It's really cool, and I think one of the things that blew me away was seeing all of these major celebrities and influencers like playing this thing, and they're loving it. <laughs> yeah, thank you. They really loved it. Um, we went to, we were invited to several shows. Um, we were invited to like Golden, Golden, um, Golden Globe, Grammys, uh, Super Bowl, and uh, Oscar. And mm -hmm. there we we had uh, many different celebrities coming, uh, including Akon. Uh, who love their device. Um, Barry Sanders is like, oh my God, I really love your device. Um, he's, he was blown away. We had like uh, anywhere from uh, Alice Cooper, who really loved our device. Uh, Gloria Gaynor was there, who lo really loved our device, and even did a Instagram, um, Instagram Live for us there as well. Uh, she really loved it. And uh, for a couple of the others, um, we had Coolio from, from my days, 1990s, one of very popular rappers back in the day. He was like not leaving. <laughs> he was like so <laughs> me a lot of fun. And uh, for example, um, man, uh, Jason, you got, yeah, uh, there was a lot of them, honestly. I think you had like 50 them, yeah. or something like that. Yeah, we had like 200 actually. We just showed about 50. Oh, wow, wow. Yeah, but um, we really, did really love it, yeah. So when it comes to this product, I mean, this this product really was very different from the first, uh, which was more like a technology gadget brewing device with your first campaign. With the second one, um, how did you get interested in creating and kind of rethinking the way we play arcade games? What kind of got, what was the impetus behind that? So uh, it was a dream, basically, right? So I'm a huge gamer myself. Used to go to arcades all the time when I was young. And it will, it's always been a dream of mine, dream of mine that someday I want to create this arcade machine. I, so first of all, I said, I want to have an arcade machine in my house, right? Having an arcade in my home, that was my childhood dream. But unfortunately, there was no offering that allowed me to make this happen. Uh, the devices were expensive, they're huge, and they had only like one game per, per device. And if I went to a new game, then I had to get a new device and it was expensive and big and so forth. So we said, um, I need to take care of this um, with my own hands because there was not really a solution that I really wanted. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. this is how I initially uh, started uh, the device. The device planning sort of started back in 2011, right? And because of all the work and living the life thing, uh, we, I wasn't able to really get into it until now where I said, uh, before I get any older, <laughs> uh, I need to get this done, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, one so, of my questions for you also was, yeah. so you have this vision to make, uh, kind of rethink the way that you can play retro style games and arcade games. But then the big question is like, what about licensing? Like, what about the people who own these games? I mean, that that's a major ordeal, I think, to be able to set up something like this. How did you deal with that massive problem? Sure. Um, that's, a, that's a really great question. Um, it's very, very hard in the beginning. Right, it's like making a snowman. Uh, in the beginning, you have to roll the snow with a lot of effort, but once it's done, you roll it once and you get a lot of snow. Right. Uh, is, so this is very similar to how we are creating a platform. Uh, in the beginning, you don't have much money, you don't have any devices out there. So content providers are uh, very. Uh, they don't want to give you any device on uh, the games until you have any proof of sales or traction, basically. That's been one of our biggest challenges at the moment. Um, now, great thing is, first of all, um, we're experiencing the industry, uh, our team, right? So we have connections. Uh, so we've, we've been getting a lot of help from connections. 
which by the way, I think is very important in getting a platform up and running. Uh, and uh, they gave us a lot of introductions. So when you're getting, when you're trying to reach a, a content provider, for example, uh, it's, it's much better to have a, somebody introduce you to them and where this person would have credibility with the other, uh, other game company, right? Then you're, you're able to uh, get help from this person's credibility to get to this company. And mm -hmm. we found that to be very, very important in, in breaking in. So once you get, you get into one, right? Uh, two becomes, uh, it's still very difficult, but a little bit easier. Once you have two, four becomes a little bit easier and so forth. Yeah, uh, and, and I mean, that's, that's like a domino effect. And now you're at over 200 games, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, and that's, yeah. that's a lot. <laughs> I think one of the things that's really important is to align your goal with theirs. So if you understand what their goals are, uh, for example, one of the pain points that our content providers had was uh, piracy. And our platform, uh, and the other thing is, of course, there is no channel uh, for them to be able to deliver their older content to the users, right? So that's mm -hmm. one of the reasons why people continue to pirate. Uh, so what we did is we provided that channel so that through us, they can sell their products legally and officially to the users. So that's one thing that they liked. Mm -hmm. And second thing is, again, this is going to help them to fight piracy because now they have a reason to. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And it's like also, it. I think you can even get some metrics on like the games that people are liking to play, right? I totally agree. Or the ones that are streaming and such. Absolutely. It's a great data collecting platform as well. When it comes to um, preparing for this campaign, so you have this idea, you know, you're starting to assemble it. One of the things that I think not a lot of people know about you is that, well, at least what I admire most is the fact that you're really good at team building. Oh, and thank you so much. Appreciate it. It's one of those things that um, it's kind of like a thankless craft, right? Because you're not always the the person in front of the screen and stuff like that. You know, all, you're the one who's assembling the team. Do you have any thoughts on how to build a, an effective team and how you go about this process? Yeah. So what's more important for me is passion. Uh, so, for example, when I look at uh, people for my team, I first thing that I look at look at is, are you a gamer? Right. So if you if you if you resonate with what you're trying to do, then all of a sudden this becomes more fun, and it becomes you get a lot more energy to make this happen. Right. Uh, so that's the first thing that I look at. Uh, are you a gamer? Uh, and I, I look at the passion uh, to bring them in. Now, um, when I bring somebody in, um, uh, what's the best way to put it? It, that obviously, this person is not going to be uh, working on only one thing. They'll be working on many different things, and this is what they want to do. And I, what, uh, one thing that I make sure is that they have impacts in all different areas of the company, so they can actually see that they are making a huge impact to the growth of the company, especially the parts that they really, really love. Um, so I think that's sort of helping them to bring uh, their energy into making this happen. Um, so one of the things that I'm really thankful for is, number one, I got really lucky. Uh, I do have an amazing team, uh, and people are really good. Um, and um, one, one thing is now they're very passionate about our project, and they want to make this happen. And, and when they're working, um, I, mean, I don't push them to work uh, overnight and, and weekends and things like that as well. But it just, it just, that just happens naturally for them, I think. I think uh, also, because, yeah. oh, sorry, I didn't mean to, to cut in, but That's I was going to okay. say, you're really good at giving people praise also, I think, where oh, thank you. someone feels, I mean, you just did it right there. <laughs> someone, oh, feels, <laughs> someone feels really good about working for you because like they feel like they're doing a good job, you know, and it makes them want to work more and um, feel like their work is valued to a degree. Yeah, um, thank you. Uh, I don't think it's me. I think it's them. Uh, and I think it's them uh, doing an amazing work that's driving me to say thank you. Uh, so uh, I'm just uh, I'm just uh, letting out what I feel from my heart and letting them know. But it's not I don't think it's anything that I have, but it's 
the talent that they have to make me say thank you. Interesting, interesting. One of the the new things you had to do with this project was to get in front of the camera yourself, right? And to do live streams and to have people who you don't know comment on your live streams and give you feedback and all that stuff. Tell me a little bit about that. Sure. Um, it, it's been a lot of fun. Um, and it's, it's a similar thing there as well. I do have, I, I call everybody who's joining uh, our, our streams and, and, uh, work and, and making this happen together, my family, because it really feels like it. And, and they're really, literally, my family to me. Um, and um, I think initially when I was about to start, I mean, I've never done this before. So I was scared, right? I mean, am I going to be able to make, do a good job? Can I make an impact? Uh, so, but I started. And great thing was that the people who were joining my sessions were uh, people who are very similar to me, right? So they were gamers. Uh, they love gaming. And we had a same common topic to talk about together. So when I showed them what I like, they got very excited. And they gave me feedbacks that got me, me really excited. And I think it resonated really well. And what, as we got together, I mean, I was having side conversations with them, laughing together with them, having fun together with them. I think that's just sort of uh, uh, it made our environment uh, so friendly and very tight relationship-wise that made everybody, uh, everybody there our family. So we sort of and call ourselves the IRK family. W- which platform were you doing these live streams on? Initially, Facebook Live, but we expanded that over to YouTube and now Twitch. And Interesting. There are, yeah, there are tools out there uh, that enables you to do one stream and just broadcast everywhere at the same time. Do you have the name of any of those yeah. out the chance? Absolutely. So one that I'm currently using right now is called StreamYard. StreamYard.com. Um, StreamYard? StreamYard.com. Okay. Uh, one that I used to use is called BeLive.com. So oh. uh, BeLive.com. Um, so there are plus and minus between the two. Uh, BeLive basically enables you to do a lot of things, including playback of videos, etc. But mm-hmm. I've had some audio issues uh, with BeLive uh, connectivity issues. So I switched over to StreamYard. And it's been much better um, but with StreamYard. Uh, I was I wasn't I didn't have the capability of, for example, playing back a video to my audience. Mm-hmm. So there's some plus and minuses, but I but I've talked to several other people who are doing video live streams on the arcade arena. I got I got to be great friends with them, and they were basically telling me that uh, they're also using Streamyard as well. And and you're doing these like 23 hours ago, you did one. And that got about 700 views, like 450 comments. And this is something you started doing that you had no experience with before. And now you're getting tons of comments, right? Yeah. Uh, the one that we did with was when we initially launched. So we live broadcasted our Kickstarter launch with our family, our arcade family. We did it together. And we did countdowns and everything. And that one had over 11,000 views. 11,000. Wow. Yeah, and I don't even know how many comments that we got. Uh, we, we got a lot. So that was good. Another one that we had was an announcement of our online gaming capability. Mm-hmm. And that one, I think, had uh, a lot of views as well. That was like that was last Friday. Last yeah, Friday. yeah, that's really incredible. And it's also one of those things where it seems like your personality is actually resonating really well with the audience. Oh, uh, thank you. Um, I think the I think uh, my audience is just too kind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, I, I'm so fortunate that I I'm able to uh, interact with these uh, extremely extremely nice people who are my family again. I think they also wanted a copy of your shirt or something like that at one point. <laughs> you know, right? somebody told me that I should do a Kickstarter for my shirt separately. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, but shirt and hoodies have been resonating. Um, when it comes to the launch here, you obviously have some experience with doing the other Kickstarter, um, and, and now you're doing this one. What worked well for you in terms of getting funding with the project? Uh, so first of all, um, listen to Sal. That really works. Um, so everything that I've learned from you, from my 
uh, past uh, experience as well as the current experience, which you are helping us with our current um, current campaign as well. Um, I mean, everything that you're you're saying is uh, you're like dead on dead on spot, right? It's perfect. So, oh, thank uh, you. Yeah, it, it's it's really true. So. Uh, for example, um, one of the one of the advice that you gave me is uh, utilize add-ons. Are you looking for help with the fulfillment side of your rewards on Kickstarter, Indiegogo, or any other crowdfunding website? Fulfillrite is literally the gold standard when it comes to crowdfunding reward fulfillment. These guys will help you ship out your products, your packages, your orders to all of your customers and your backers. They've been working in this industry for a really long time. I totally vouch for their services and they'll even do things like answer simple questions for you on fulfillment and shipping and figuring out how to get your products into the hands of your customers in the easiest way possible. If you're interested in learning more about them, you can go to fulfillright.com or crowdcrux.com slash fulfillright and that will take you to them. Again, that is F-U-L-F-I-L-L-R-I-T-E dot com. Right. And we've just started using uh, add-ons and it's been working extremely well. Uh, all the other advices that you have given me before uh, uh, during, during their current campaign, it's been working extremely well. So uh, that was really good. So I'm very thankful. So thank you so much for, uh, for that, Sal. Appreciate it. Definitely. Thank uh, you. Thank you also, yeah. <laughs> uh, I think, um, again, a lot of things that I've learned from you, for example, such as making the page right, look right. The videos make it concise but to the point uh, and first 30 seconds is where you're getting the attention of the user and about first third of the page all right up to where we're explaining all the games and 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 a, and a capability that's when users are making the uh, the decision on purchase and that was a spot on mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. so so those have been extremely extremely helpful uh, and awesome. the uh, pricing strategies that you coached me and stuff like that, and they work really well as well. And uh, on marketing, we're used to working with uh, several different people uh, who, who have very good ex experiences in the industry, and that's been working well. Uh, PR strategy and everything. I mean, I think I think it's just um, what's the best way to put it. We were able to put one picture together. Yeah, yeah. There are a lot of different pieces, obviously, to the puzzle. Yeah. Um, but you guys have managed to do that and also I think really anticipate the, the audience very well in terms of what they're going to like, what they're going to get excited about. Um, and I mean, even replying to all of the comments you're getting there on the page, like that's really takes a lot of time um, and dedication, but you guys are doing it. Oh, thank you. Um, I, I think that's very important. Um, your, your audience is most important thing. I think if you put your audience as number one priority, and give them your your effort, your time to make that happen, and then audience will give that back to you. Uh, so they are also giving me a lot of coaching as well, right? Uh, I mean, I've been playing games all my life, but so have they, and they have playing all their life in a different kind of experience. They're sharing that with me. I get the information, and I am able to utilize that information to uh, communicate to our new backers. Mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and and bring them on board and so forth. So it's actually been my IRK family who's been helping me a lot in the front, and mm -hmm. uh, that's sort of been growing. So I'm very thankful for that as well. So you you learned a lot about this campaign. Would you give advice to anyone who wants to launch a new product on Kickstarter? Um, what how what would you say to them, or what would you even coach yourself if you were to look back in time? Oh uh, wow, that's a great question. Um, it's hard. <laughs> it's very, very hard. It's extremely time consuming. And um, first of all, uh, I would I would advise to uh, think about it about 10 times uh, before making the decision. Uh, and I think what's most important is to getting the preparation is extremely important. Uh, during the preparation phase, I think you you'll be able to tell whether your campaign will be successful or not, um, just by trying to collect uh, email addresses, right? Uh, getting your feedbacks from other people and so forth. And based on the data, um, 
I would strongly ask that question to myself if I were to do this again. Uh, mm -hmm. Would I do this again? Uh, and if that answer is yes, and you're confident about it, I say go for it and make it happen. And don't look back, go for it, make it happen. Uh, if you don't ha have that confidence, uh, then it's a very, very difficult process. So if, right, if without confidence, you cannot come in. If you cannot come in, you're not going to be able to be successful. So I think um, that process is very important. Um, mm -hmm. And make the right decision first. And then commit afterwards if you say yes. Yeah, I, th I think the other thing that you guys did um, very well was being aware of like the, the assets that you're going to need in order to pull this off and just going after them like one by one. So first of all, with licensing the game, then the design of it, then going to the community. Like you, you really tackled every single little brick in order to build a wall, you know? Yeah. Yeah, um, thank you. So I think you did a good job on, on that aspect as well. So knowing what thank kind you. of uh, challenges you have to get past in order to get to this ultimate goal of being where you want to be, you know? Yeah. And this is, I think, where also the community comes in as well. The communities give me a lot of great feedback to make it happen and steer the ship, uh, the direction of the ship. Uh, so I think that's extremely important as well. Um, in terms of the next, what do we got here? You got 22 more days to go. Do you have any things you're going to be announcing or any things we should be on the lookout for? Uh, yeah, thank you. So we... Um, this is part of our initial plan too, but uh, we do have some major announcements coming uh, from now until end of the campaign. Uh, so, um, do you have a hint? I think that's going to be very exciting. <laughs> uh, and, <laughs> um, I'll just say it's, it's going to be extremely exciting. <laughs> uh, one of them we actually released last Friday again, which was online gaming capability. Um, and uh, during our uh, IRK live session on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter, uh, we played online game together with about uh, seven different people, and mm -hmm. we broadcasted it live. And we had people watching, people cheering. We had contests going on, and that was a lot of fun. That was a blast. Um, and we have more things coming like that. Um, I, I think probably every week <laughs> until the end of the campaign. Yeah, that, that that's so exciting, and it's also a good time, I think, with COVID and everything, to be yeah. able to play a game virtually with other people. Like, there's nothing oh, yeah. better, right? Because everyone's missing having fun. Everyone's missing doing stuff with their friends. It's just not that fun in that way. Yeah, I totally agree with you. And in fact, I think COVID is also uh, triggering people to look at more contents on Facebook and others. I think that may also be one of the other reasons why we're getting a lot of people joining our uh, Facebook Live. Uh, people are very interested, and there's also COVID, so it sort of worked out well. And exactly like you said, uh, things like gaming uh, resonates extremely well if you're uh, sort of staying home uh, due to the COVID situation and things. So uh, I, I, I shouldn't be saying this, but it, it's been working out for us. But, but again, um, I want the COVID situation resolved. Still have people playing games. So Awesome. Where can people go to learn more about iArcade? Uh, thank you. Um, we have a web page, uh, iArcade.com, I-I-R-C-A-D-E.com. And we have all the information there. We also have a Facebook page and a Facebook community page. Uh, also, um, YouTube channel, uh, youtube.com slash C slash iArcade. And also, lastly, Kickstarter page, where if you look, uh, if you search for irk.com, I-R-C-A-D-E, uh, if you search for that, you'll get a page, and we have all the information there. Great. And my final question for you, Jong, is um, when it comes to the audience, right? So a lot of people are in different stages. Some people have launched campaigns before. Some people, sometimes it's their first campaign. Maybe we could end with you um, either sharing a final tip a final word of encouragement, something, that, a story you'd like to share of how it felt to, you know, be able to launch this and get a bunch of money when you go live. Anything along those lines would be awesome. Oh, sure. Thank you. Um, so the first thing that comes to my mind is that it's extremely hard. Um, so you really have to be dedicated to, to make this successful. And uh, if you don't have the confidence and if you are not willing to spend 24-7 to make this happen, during the campaign, 
then I don't think you should be starting it. But if you are dedicated, which basically means you love your project, you love what you're doing, you have the passion to make it happen, and, you, and you're confident to make this happen, I would say just go for it 100%, just put all yourself into it, and you will be successful. Um, that's what I'm seeing right now. And this uh, thing that you have to have the passion and this passion, if you have this, that this will also excite your audience as well. And this will help to uh, grow and make it happen. So well um, said, well said. Thank yeah. you for coming on the show. Really appreciate it. And good luck with your remaining uh, 22 days here. Thank you so much, Sal. Thank you for having me. This was a lot of fun. Appreciate it. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Crowdfunding Demystified Podcast. Again, my name is Salvador Rigman. Hope you got a lot of value out of today's episode. Jong is a, a really long-term um, student of mine who actually enrolled way back when, when he was doing his first campaign. Um, this is for like a microbrewery kind of a project on Kickstarter. He did a really good job um, raising money with that campaign. This one has completely smashed his goal over 50K, now over $475,000, which is incredible. More than a thousand backers I think it's going to go a lot higher than that. So I urge you to go and check out IR Arcade for just a good example of a project. But also, um, I think that this interview in general, um, there's a lot that happens behind the scenes, right, of a Kickstarter campaign. And you look at it and it's kind of like very broad strokes. So you can be like, do a pre-launch, man, like get traffic, get funding, do these things. But there's so much that's happening behind the scenes that you don't get to see, right, that goes into a really full-fledged, polished product. And in my opinion, I think that Jong, one of his superpowers, and I've told him this many times, is the fact that he is really good at building teams. He's really good and very passionate about getting together a team of people in order to pull off a really big vision. And I think that he recognizes the value of that so much and also just his ability to lead a team and to motivate a team around him, um, I think is unparalleled and one of the, the really strong hallmarks of being an entrepreneur nowadays. Because let's be honest, like you could master marketing if you want, but at the same time, you're not going to be a master necessarily of design or of building the prototype or of doing the technology and the hardware aspects or of doing business development, right? Um, or, you know, so many other areas like accounting and the business processes, figuring out shipping and fulfillment and everything that goes into a new product launch. It's just, it's impossible. You cannot be a master of so many crafts. You can obviously know a little bit about all of them, which I think is really important. And one of the reasons why I put out so much education is I want you to be an informed business owner, right? I want you to know a little bit about marketing. I want you to know a little bit about logistics so that you can then eventually hire that out. Or if you want to do it yourself, maybe that you're welcome to do that sort of leaning on your strengths. But um, at a certain point in time, you got to outsource some of your weaknesses, right? So I think that that's really something that's a, the hallmark of most successful crowdfunding campaigns is being able to identify what you're good at and what you're not good at. Now, if you're just kind of getting started um, learning about crowdfunding, a really great place to get started is the Kickstarter launch formula. This is a book that I put together that's available on Audible. So if you like listening, I don't know why, but if you like listening to the sound of my voice for some reason, um, or you think that you know I bring good education on this podcast, you'll probably also like my Audible book because it's basically like a condensed version. Um, and it's really impact driven, very um, nitty gritty, you know, techniques, those kinds of stuff. You can check that out at crowdcrux.com slash Kickstarter audio. That is C R O W D C R U X dot com slash Kickstarter audio, crowdcrux.com slash Kickstarter audio. That will take you to the audible version of the Kickstarter launch formula. Really great read. In addition, um, if you would like more of my personal counsel when it comes to doing a one on one intensive coaching call, going through all the facets of your project. Um, you could be in the prototyping phase, you could be in the marketing phase, whatever phase it is you're in. I've always had people come away with lots of good um, takeaways from these calls. And it's also something where, you know, I can't always necessarily help you. You know, I'm definitely open to that, but um, I can't always help you. So sometimes I'll also introduce you to other people in the industry who I think can be a better service and value for you. So finding vendors and service providers in this industry of crowdfunding is notoriously difficult. A lot of people are ripped off by honestly just people who don't know what they're doing in the industry. So I can talk behind the scenes a little bit more candidly about the, the companies I recommend, about who you should be working with specifically for your category 
category, um, what you should know if you're going to be hiring an agency, all that kind of stuff. And in addition, if you want me um, to sort of step in and to run your campaign or to work on a certain aspect of your campaign, we can also talk a little bit about that on this coaching call. If you want to book a one-on-one call with me, you can go to crowdcrux.com slash coaching. That is C-R-O-W-D-C-R-U-X.com slash coaching, crowdcrux.com slash coaching. And also, if you're not interested in, in having um, someone else do your, your product, you're just looking to do it yourself, I have a lot of students who want to learn how to do a crowdfunding campaign and they want to learn how to do things like Facebook ads and setting up landing pages and all that stuff. And that's cool. And usually they then bring me on as a long-term coach, which was the example for this campaign. I'm actually a coach on this particular project and also some other ones. So there's a lot of options here. Um, This is really a great step for you. I think when it comes to taking that next step to getting serious with your project, there's a lot of stuff that I'd love to share with you, but that goes beyond the scope of just these podcasts. But anyway, I've been rattling on way too much now. Thank you so much for listening to this podcast episode. Go and check out some of the other ones we got there in the archives. A lot of great stuff. My name is Salvador Brigman, and I will see you next time.